What is up enthusiasts, it is Cedar Flags here and welcome back to another one of my videos. So the other day I was researching a few never built projects for another never built video. And that video usually consists of smaller projects or big projects that don't have a lot of details to it. But oh my goodness, while I was researching, I saw this project that was cancelled and let me just say, it is definitely big enough for its own video. It would have been if built one of the most innovative and diverse theme parks out there. Something with such a great collection of coasters that it would have easily inspired enthusiasts all around the world to venture to this place in Florida. Florida has a lot of parks. You have Disney, Universal, Fun Spot, SeaWorld, and nearby Busch Gardens. But did you know that in the early 2010s, there was going to be another competitor up in this batch of parks? This is the Orlando Thrill Park. Other parks mainly focus on theming in the area, but this park would have focused mainly on the thrills and would have been catered exactly to the roller coaster enthusiasts. It would have some rides that are extremely rare, never built, and one of the tallest coasters in the world. So let's get right into it. This is Cedar Flags and today, we are going to talk about the story of the never built Orlando Thrill Park. In mid-2010, they officially announced the park. They announced blueprints, a map of the park, and renderings of all the attractions in the park. And from first glance, you could definitely see a lot of coasters inspired off of rides at Magic Mountain and Cedar Point, and we'll get to that. In fact, they were so confident about this happening that they had a spot at that year's IAPA conference. They had a booth, they talked to people like In The Loop and Theme Park Review. So yeah, this was a pretty big deal back in the day. So, the story starts off in the late 2000s when a company developer called International Drive Investors LLC, referencing, of course, International Drive in Orlando, Florida, planned on building a massive amusement park. They looked at all of the theme parks in the area and wanted something that catered exactly to the enthusiasts. At the time, roller coasters were, well, very competitive. King Dakar just came out and many other rides like El Toro and Maverick were changing the game. So, they wanted a little bit of a piece of the action of the roller coaster industry. They took a lot of inspiration out of parks like Six Flags, Magic Mountain, and Cedar Point to build something with a bunch of world class roller coasters. Now a lot of these parks have a lot of stuff that caters to kids, but not this park. This park was going to be all thrills and nothing else. There were going to be some family attractions, but well, there was definitely a major focus on the thrills. With all of these ideas and inspirations, they came up with a brilliant idea called the Orlando Thrill Park. A park like I said catered to the thrill seekers. It was going to be located on a 78 acre plot of land right off of International Drive, right across the street from Fun Spot Orlando, and pretty close to Universal as well. This was going to be one of the biggest parks in the area. Sure, it wasn't a 100 plus acre plot of land like the other parks, but this park promised to have the biggest coaster collection in the greater Orlando area. So let's get into those coasters. Thankfully, according to the LA Times, we have information about each and every ride. So let's get into that right now. The park itself was going to have a grand total of 14 rides, including 8 roller coasters. And a lot of these roller coasters would be very innovative to the country, as well as the world. So let's get right into these models. The first model was going to be a Vacoma motorbike style roller coaster. The Vacoma Motorbike Roller Coaster was the first roller coaster that they talked about. This would be one of the only family-oriented attractions in the entire park, and said that they were inspired off of Pony Express at Knott's Berry Farm, though the layout would be much more similar to a ride like Booster Bike at Toverland. The speeds would go up to 50 miles an hour and be very similar to Booster Bike, but of a slightly different layout with a family setting. The next roller coaster that they announced was going to be a mock launch roller coaster similar to Blue Fire at Europa Park. Now, at the time, this was a massive deal, because the only existing modern mock coaster at the time was, well, Blue Fire, which was the prototype. This would have been first of its kind in the entire hemisphere, and let's just say that a lot of enthusiasts were hyped about it at the time, because, well, they didn't know what it was going to have. In fact, it was going to be about 160 feet tall, and much bigger than Blue Fire. They never confirmed if it was going to be a multi-launch or not, and guessing by the time and the technology that Mach had, I'm not 100% sure it did. But a single launch to Mach Coaster going over 160 feet in 2010, yeah, that would have been a big deal. 
Unfortunately, the plans of this never really came out, and we never know the true layout of this ride. After that, they said that they were going to introduce a Vacoma SLC. Now, we know about the Vacoma SLC, and we know how much hate it gets, and I'm pretty surprised that this was in the lineup. They did have a lot of rides by Vacoma, and we are going to get to some more, but this was going to be a typical Vacoma SLC clone, nothing too special about it. The next one, though it is another clone, is definitely way more interesting. This was going to be a Vacoma Stingray. Now at the time, there was only one Vacoma Stingray that was overseas, and it's basically a modern take on the Flying Dutchman that is much more compact. This was Vacoma's modern excuse for a flying coaster in between the Flying Dutchman's and Fly at Fantasia Land. This was going to be a clone of that exact same coaster, and would have been only the second of its kind. Unfortunately, the one existing Vacoma Stingray went away, and the coaster model went the way of the Dodo because, well, none other Stingrays were built. The next coaster they announced was going to be a clone of an Intamin Zaxpin. They were inspired off of Green Lantern First Flight after its announcement at Six Flags Magic Mountain, and even though it opened the next year, we knew about it at the time of the announcement of the park. So, they were heavily inspired off of the unique layout, and wanted to make something similar. But instead of that clone, they would have made it a clone of the 25 meter versions. Of course, now ironically, we know about what happened to the Intamin Zaxpin at Magic Mountain. Of course, it opened with some good hype, but eventually, with a few restrictions and laws, its reputation quickly crashed to the ground. And they finally dismantled the coaster, said they were going to relocate it, and well, they never did. So it really shows you, well, how good this coaster would have been. Now we get into some pretty interesting coasters. This next coaster is a dive pretzel coaster. Now I think this coaster model itself could qualify for a segment on one of my never built videos because, well, it's definitely a very interesting model. And thankfully, we have renderings for what this would have looked like. First off, we know that this would have been made by both Vacoma and Chance Rides, which is definitely a very interesting compilation of manufacturers because we don't see many rides built by multiple manufacturers. This was going to be its prototype model, and the ride would have been a very compact layout. Creators said that it would have been inspired off of the old school Schwarzkopf loopers, and the stats that were shown were that the ride would be around 148 feet tall, have multiple inversions, and have a layout of around 2,000 feet long. This was designed to be compact and another one of the many thrill rides in this park. The next coaster that was announced, which is the seventh of the eight coasters, would have been an SNS 4D coaster. I'm not talking about the SNS 4D free spins, I'm talking about the massive models that they've made overseas, like Asianica and Dinaconda. These rides are critically acclaimed and people absolutely love them. And of course, those were inspired off of, well, X2, a ride at Six Flags Magic Mountain. So it's safe to say that this ride was inspired off of X2, but would have been SNS. The ride would have been exactly 200 feet tall, keeping it from beating the 4D record and actually being the shortest out of the four, counting this one, 4D roller coasters. This was a very hyped up roller coaster by them, and would have probably been everyone's favorite at the park if this ended up being built. The final roller coaster that they announced was definitely the final one for a reason, and this one got the most turning heads. What was it? Well, it was an Intamin Inverted Strata roller coaster. That is right, not a strata, but an inverted strata. Now, I assume they mean like an Intamin Impulse, where the trains are under the track, as opposed to something with an inverted top hat, because they mentioned nothing about an inversion. It would be weird to see an inverted strata coaster, but maybe they wanted to go for the tallest inverted coaster model? I'm not 100% sure. Anyways, this ride was going to be confirmed to be $25 million, be a near clone of Top Thrill Dragster at Cedar Point, but it was going to be different. Why? Well, even though the top speed was 120, the roller coaster's height would have been 425 feet, making it at the time the third fastest and second tallest roller coaster in the world. And this would have been a prototype model, and it would have broke a bunch of records. It would have been by far, and still to this day, the tallest roller coaster in the southern United States. This would have been a massive deal, and I'm sure this would be the ride that would have the most lines, well, because of the most downtime. I'm going to be honest, this park definitely looks incredible, but at the same time, I feel like there would be a bunch of downtime on these rides. Some of the flat rides include a pendulum ride, a flipping ride, which is what they said, and a sky coaster model, which would be very weird because a few years after this was announced, Funspot announced their very own sky coaster, which was a relocation of the one from MGM Grand Adventures. 
So let's talk about why this never happened in the first place. Why do we never get to see a towering strata and a world class forward e coaster in this area? Well, it's pretty simple. So, unlike all of the other parks in the Orlando area, this one was located directly across the stream from a neighborhood. This one was basically on the side of a neighborhood, and that showed a lot of problems. Now, for the latter half of 2010 and very early 2011, things were looking very good, and this park was looking like it's getting enough hype to actually happen. But then, the director stepped in. So, by early 2011, things were getting extremely serious, and they went to the developers of Orlando, and, well, what happened? They went to the Municipal Planning Board and they instantly shot down the idea because of, like I said, the neighbors complaining about noise. Now, unlike other theme parks, this park really didn't have many techniques. Parks like Universal are covered in walls and trees, so the nearby surroundings won't hear much. This was out in the open, had very loud rides, and the screams of guests would definitely be echoed from miles away. Plus, it would have probably been seen by Funspot and Universal ruining the immersion of, especially, Universal. By June of that following year, 2011, they officially announced that the park was no more. It was very unfortunate for enthusiasts all over the place because, let's be honest, another 4D in the eastern side of the US would have been glorious. This park would have easily been one of the best coaster collections out of any park in the world. Would it have been one of the best overall? Well, with its collection, it definitely looks very limited. But when it comes to the roller coaster collection, it was second to none. Anyways, what do you think about this in the comments below? Do you think if this happened, it would last a while? Do you think it would be profitable for the area? Or do you think competition would get to it quick? Let me know down in the comments below. This is Cedar Flags, and I will see you all later.